Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to test the KTS system, the one with the Mark 1-3 command pod, and see if it can be the one to help us complete the first EVA. Of course, in the previous video we actually had the Maya space plane survive, but it's a long way off from being ready to carry Kerbals, and of course the pod is safer. However, uh, I think that it has promise, and we'll continue testing it, and we will see. Uh, I mean, it is actually cheaper than this, so that is a plus side, even though this only has the Earth service module, the lower forward service module, so that is something to consider. Uh, but yes, in other things, we have a Earth Jupiter window here right now. And it's in 107 days. Now we don't have the contract uh, program for it because uh, we don't have enough points. So I'll have to expand the admin building. But maybe we should try it out beforehand. It is, after all, a stretch. And I don't know. We probably don't. We, we do have enough points for fast, but fast is not that fast. Then again, they're asking for some flybys and stuff like that. So. I would like Breakneck, but I haven't accumulated. I never really focused on accumulating the confidence points, so. The question is whether we can make a rocket that can get over there and communicate with us. And maybe whether we can do it on ELA-4 instead of ELA-5. Can it make the probe small enough so that we don't have to use ELA-5 for that? So let me try to do that in the VAB and we'll see what I come up with. Okay, so obviously the main struggle is getting power out at Jupiter. And I've got these huge solar panels that are really expensive because we haven't unlocked RTGs and probably the early RTGs aren't going to be great for us. We'll take a look at the tech tree. I, I'm aware of RTGs. Uh, but yes, for now we have the big solar panels on here and they're heavy. So we're not getting a lot of Delta V from our final stage here, which is sad. But we then have five of these thrusters on this stage, which is sort of sad in its own way. And then I've expanded the Hydrolock stage with the RZ-20s, uh, so it's a new tank that is bigger. And oh, uh, we used a different controller that I already had tooled. Uh, it's the controller on the tail of the Maya spacecraft, incidentally. Same 20-ton controller. So that's new. And then we had to sort of make the first stage smaller in order to accommodate the new mass on top uh, because we've made this stage bigger. So all of that said, we still don't have enough to get to Jupiter. And so we'll probably need boosters and need to launch it on ELA-5 if we want to do this. Uh, let's take a look at the RTG options. We really need more than 16,000 meters per second if we're going to do this. So let's say we started up the RTG line. Their unlock cost is 107,000. <laughs> and... Well, that's per minute. That's not a lot. 0 0.04 per second. Here, here the multi-hundred watt RTG is of course the first good one, but it's each one is 5,000. It would be lighter than the solar panels, but not cheaper. Well, I mean, may might be a little bit cheaper. This is sort of just an experiment. Let's see, we'll be okay on this pad? Still doesn't like the GSE, but maybe if we put on the boosters, it'll suddenly like the GSE. It could be the larger Hydrolock stage that is causing the problem. Well, with four boosters, that's barely 16,000. And propellant GSC is still a no. Well, the pad was actually sized for a slightly different situation than this. The maximum thing that we were supposed to do was to have a heavy version. But now our upper stages are a little bit heavier too, so... It's a little bit too heavy for the pad. But that gets us a healthy amount, doesn't it? Yeah, I always take uh, advantage of the fudge factor that they've built in for the tooling. So I 
very frequently changed uh, tanks just slightly to meet the mass requirements, just for you to know. Oh, if only these could be tweak scaled. Yeah, it always has that point. Well, we'll certainly need new GSE tanks since we've expanded the amount of UDMH and NTO we need. And we'll need Separatrons. Oh, I had tooled the uh, N7 type, the large scale avionics type, for maybe this stage, so we can go with that. We gotta reduce the science that we have here, maybe. Oh, this is a service module 1 tank. We gotta tool that anyway, so we might as well make it a better tank. Yeah, this is probably the stuff that we want anyway, though. Yeah, I think I'll replace the thruster on here with something a little bit more powerful, just in case it has to help. Okay, so this is a bit of a risk, and we're not getting any reward for from it except for science. Uh, but it'll allow us to test whether we need to go up with uh, go up the RTG line, or whether the solar panels might be enough. We'll unlock better solar panels potentially, but we should probably try this. So. We are going to upgrade the GSE to make sure it can handle this stuff. Wow, 21,000? Uh, what are we doing to it? I thought we were just increasing some fuel, but okay. Uh, oh, right, but that's going to delay our rocket construction. Well, we'll wait until after KTS. But yeah, Jupiter is a tough one. Comms we seem to have. Power is tougher. Oh, we have to pay attention to the Duna 3, which is doing a mid-course adjustment. I don't think we got to make this Earth to Jupiter window anyway. Okay, all is well out here. We're actually pretty close to Mars right now, but it's got to take all the way until over there till we actually reach it. Maybe we should just wait till the next Jupiter window, at which point, since this program will be complete, we'll be able to pick that one up. Assuming it's the one that we want to pick up, though. Okay, I, I, I think just pointing out the sun is going to change everything completely anyway. We'll just fix it when we get there. Darn powerful, whatever, 40, kilo, uh, 40 newton thrusters that we have on here. Okay, and SOI change alarm. All right, let's pay attention to the next one. Oh, I forgot to turn off avionics on the other one. Well, probably be all right. Okay, 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 okay just point sun down. Just point sun down, that's enough. It's fine. Figure it out when we get there. Okay, we'll shut down this one's avionics, and it's got its SY change. All right, we'll pay attention to them once they get there. There's a small bodies flyby, but apparently Phobos and Deimos aren't small enough. They really they didn't give Phobos and Deimos any love, huh? Crude lunar exploration we do have to pick up eventually. Okay, ELA-5. Solar panels, solar panels, solar panels. <laughs> or, I mean, I don't know. If we get a lot of science from Mars, it doesn't... I mean, we're just carrying the same science we did before, so we're probably not going to. Okay. I think we do have to tool these. Do have unlock credit. And we will build one. Uh, oh, I'm using the bigger parabolic antenna. Yeah. All right, that says 54 days. So we won't make this window. If we have a long travel time, maybe. 
That's October 21st. Um, that's departure October 6th, though. What if I... Do I want to wait that long? <laughs> I want to get get there, like, down here. We don't need to insert it all. Okay, so next opportunity. And we'll be trying to get there quicker. Uh, maybe in two years. Or we could potentially speed this up. Rush. How about to some more modest target? 294 days to series. And then there's a Vesta one after that. The difference between not rushing and rushing is quite severe. So, okay. We can't rush it. Let's save some money, actually, if we don't need it that fast, then. We will pass on this Jupiter window. Alright, let's see about the test of this KTS Kerbal Transport System. Nope, it will be uncrewed. We should start training them, though. Okay. Oh, today that's not working. Alright. Throttle up, SAS on, and anything I should worry about? I don't know. Ignition. Oh, we've lost one. It's on the core. We gotta go. <laughs> we gotta find out if that works. That actually might not be the worst thing. I mean... It reduces the G-forces. Okay, booster burn is complete. Very CST 100-ish feel to it. Oh, that's the one that failed to ignite. They have a 2 minute 25 second burn time. So we are past that. There are better Viking engines that will last longer. But, except for the one that failed, these didn't do too badly. Okay, launch escape, little, launch escape system jettison. That works. I'm aware that the launch escape systems are supposed to be slightly imbalanced, so they, they pull the pod away to one side. But we really don't have to go through all of that here. We're lucky we have a launch escape system at all. It's a 40 decibel thing, uh, milliwatt one, so that we can communicate to the geosats. So we should be, assuming that the geosats are still working, we should be good. Okay, separation and ignition. Soon we will get to try out the fuel cells for the first time and see how they do. Mark 1-3 is apparently Apollo. That's fine by me. Um, start training. Uh, uh, maybe we'll leave one for the space plane. Just in case. 2002. Well, well Viola's gonna retire in November. Maybe that'll delay her retirement, though. Maybe she should get a last fling. Three vehicles to space, right? I, she was the first in the space plane. And then... She had done the Mark 1 pod. So... Maybe in some way we can get her a third one. Nancy's the actual pilot. Maybe we'll save her for the space plane. A lot of the scientists do the Mark 1-3. Retirement increase is not much, but retirement increase for her is much better. They take 250 days anyway. But yeah, putting the scientist on the automated pod seems like a better idea. So yeah, overall I think we have one engine out capability to orbit as long as it's not the second stage engine. <laughs> uh, that's probably the only one that we wouldn't be able to lose. Okay, that's good enough for now.
Okay, we should have deorbited the stage. Oh well. Separation. Okay, fuel cells. Well, it says running, but it's not running. <laughs> Flies. Okay, now it's running, and we're replenishing our electric charge. That's good. And in theory, I wanted 14 days of hydrogen and oxygen for, you know, lunar missions and everything. Let's just see. We'll wait a day and see how it does. There's boil off though. I should put some MLI layers on. I probably I didn't do that. Ah uh, yeah. We'll have to put MLI layers. This isn't gonna be good enough for even a day. Well, it'll be yeah yeah not good enough for a day. All right. Well, that's one thing. I'll. We'll go one more orbit and then deorbit. We should be able to do a space television broadcast without any uh, Kerbals on board. I mean, they've done that on uncrewed missions before. Deorbit burn. I should just put the fuel cells on the pod, huh? I, I assume they'll be able to... But then the pod can't have... MLI layers, I don't think, so the boil off will be just too severe, I think. I'll have to check that. But then we'd get them back, that'd be cheaper. Okay, we have the scent mode on here, a COM shifter. Okay, well, we'll see about that. Ridiculous little service module. We should just put it on top, shouldn't we? Why are we even dumping it? <laughs> Yeah, I think I should put it on top. At least for Leo. Not like it's protecting the heat shield or something. Okay. Off it goes. Now we have to check out whether these thrusters work. Well, they seem to be doing something. And I'll try out the scent mode. I don't know if I want 100% the scent mode. We'll see. Sometimes Smart ASS likes to control pitch and yaw even though I'm trying to use descent mode and I don't want it to do pitch and yaw. That's another thing. Where is that decoupler? Oh, the docking port, right. It's staged for the launch escape system. Okay, here we go. May I want it heads down so that we can stop sooner, but maybe we should pass through the Amazon. Okay, let's, let's try and turn off Pitch and Yaw here. Please stop trying to hold Pitch. You can't even do it. Please. Please stop. <laughs> Yeah, even though these are off and I press execute, it still tries to. It's weird. That's a lot of tilt. Maybe I don't want that much. I swear I have plasma blackout on, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Maybe it's just flat out disabled in realism overhaul. I was wondering about that during the Maya space plane re-entries as well, since we had complete control. I was anticipating not having control, but... Okay, we are through. Not that much ablation. 3.5 Gs. But that would include launch, I think. I'll just leave the COM offset. And full deployment brings us to... 6 meters per second as planned. Okay, splash down, recover, normal. We're somewhere in the Atlantic. Sure it'll be easy to spot us. 
Okay, well, 74.3%. That's not bad. Okay, well, we should build another one, but let me see about the MLI layers. We will be wanting to put Kerbals on this one. So, how many can we get? Still just 25. Can this have MLI layers? Oh, it can. So we could put the fuel cells and the uh, service module up here, but for our first flight with a Kerbal, we'll probably just leave it as is so that we're not changing things unnecessarily and so we'll just build one of these once I have money <laughs> can we too late no we can't do anything it's really 34,000 okay fine I mean they're training anyway it's not like we're in a hurry so could start working up the RTGs 40 90 170 so 302 science to get up to multi hundred watt RTGs. We should get the better solar panels as a priority though, but we don't have enough science yet. Uh, maybe just so that we have stuff going on, we'll start these. Okay, so we have the Jewel 1 finished and we are building a new KTS for the Kerbald mission. And I'm also building a duplicate of the Jewel 1 as a Drez 1 for series. And so that's all queued up, but we are now at the point where our Mars missions, our Mars orbit missions, are arriving at Mars, and we have to pay attention to that, so let's jump to it. Okay, charged and still in control. We have comms. Okay, now we are in Mars SOI and should do a correction. Okay, so as far as communication goes, Periapsis should be fine, as we can see. And we are trying to make sure our periapsis is right where it would cross Phobos' orbit. That's for later. And so that'll be 101.7 meters per second. And after this correction, I'll fool around with that. So let's get all this started. But around here, we've done everything except for infrared radiometry, which is surface biome dependent. Okay, should be good enough. Ignition? No, nope, not with that. Okay, so we'll have that. Rather inclined compared to Phobos. But, eventually... Well, that's 2,620 right there. So, we'll only be able to do minor adjustments beyond that, beyond touching Phobos's orbit. We could try for a glancing blow kind of thing. That's harder to manage anyway. So we'll probably just have to do a burn and apoapsis to phase with it, uh, with whatever we have left. That should satisfy the contract, so no problems there. Okay. Well, this is not good for sunlight. Okay, we're spun up. Let's proceed. Okay. Oh, where's our probe? There it is. Okay, we are a little bit late. The original plot really doesn't matter. I'll just see when we get the right apoapsis for Phobos. I should have done this earlier. Well, that stuff is all running still. We haven't done the low over Mars stuff very well. I wonder where our... oh, there's our other mission. Should see if it has any fuel to get to a lower orbit. Okay, we've captured, but we're a little bit off. We'll see. We don't want our periapsis to get too low. Okay, I think we'll go around and do another burn. Now oh, that's pretty close right there. Hmm. Okay, we've got a Phobos encounter right there. Won't have very long to get that Phobos science. I don't suppose there's any market for a Phobos impactor, is there? Okay, well we have the Delta V. The other probe isn't gonna come in 
for a while. And we have fulfilled the Mars orbit contract, so that part is done. Let's try to get that Phobos science. Up, oh, but, um, well, we're going to throw things off a little bit by turning to the sun. I mean, 146 kilometers after this burn, we'll really be... But this burn is... Uh, will it really... Uh, do I trust it anymore after the turn? Hmm. Let me try and mess with it just a little bit to see if it's real or not. Uh, I thought so. Okay. Now, Phobos was actually sort of the harder one. Deimos is higher up. Okay, let's see... What is going on? Okay, that seems to be going further away. I'll take that. Anything will do, really. I will uh, manually turn this to the sun, I think. That'd be safer. Okay, good enough. Still got the encounter. That's the important part. Okay, over we go. Let's see about this potato. Ooh, 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 ooh. Don't time warp too much. We'll definitely miss the encounter like that. Okay, where is there it is. There's Phobos. We are running things, but these are long-term things, so it's useless. <laughs> Telemetry analysis may or may not finish in time. Four minutes is a long time. Yeah, we, we only have like a one and a half minute encounter. But there it is. Let's see. We have our Phobos flyby. And once I pass it, I think I'll wrap it up. Uh, we'll do the next Mars Orbiter mission in the next video. And we'll try and get it to fly by Deimos. But once again, it probably won't get much science out of it. We didn't put the thermometer and barometer and the TV camera on. Those would have been good, the good stuff. Alas, but we'll have many other opportunities. So anyway, with this flying by Phobos, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.